thoughts are reflections about consciousness and what conscious um, can do um, in interaction with matter. That's why, and we are now uh, building a laboratory uh, since one month, and uh, that's why we caught these challenges and this consciousness with reflections that we intend to uh, implant this uh, laboratory in my fact faculty. And so um, I bring here more some reflections from the journey we did reading, talking, um, and experiencing phenomena of consciousness. And then that's why we think to bring it to our faculty. It was accepted to have this laboratory. accepted as self-evident. Uh, uh, mankind always wished to know more and about the future, about the mankind, about how we behave. A lot of questions are there and some try even to go further, not only through thought but through substances and altering consciousness, going into altered states of consciousness to reproduce. But mm, just before in the classic uh, civilizations, they used some of our altered states of consciousness, physiological, let us say sleep and uh, dreaming, and they used it for therapeutic purposes in the sleep temples of Egypt or Greece. So, uh, there is something that is not new, but at that time they didn't know how it worked, and uh, that's why we uh, read and collected data about it, and some psychiatrists even have been looking what cultural uh, issues could bring. And then we enter in the category of a personal experience. So let us say that is the, the this building of the personal experience that can change something in uh, like this something, let us say body or some kind of disease, but not only this uh, relation between conscious of the self and its body, but with, uh, in connection with culture, where one lives with mind naturally and with the body. So it's something concerning altogether what we have, and we have to look for other explanations and issues, and artists they bring as well some knowledge. So knowledge is not coming only from the scientific methods, but as well from artists, from poets, so knowledge is not only the scientific method. And it's interesting that my brief that puts in this way what for him is uh, consciousness. There is an object outside me as you are here, me as a body, but some instance, some structure that is mainly connected to the brain, but outside or partially outside of the body. And so he tries to bring here some other uh, knowledge that we are not only uh, a body that accepts what we see, that, that we are not uh, a camera that makes photos. So with our, this instance that he is calling as well, conscious that builds the subjective experience, we can go further and even imagine what is not still there and go further for there, there are difficult issues. Um, and if uh, we collect the data or this idea from Madrid, so if we were only, uh, at the say, camera, making photos, having some pixels, we do not have reaction, different reactions. If I was only a camera, I should have 4,3 pixels, 5,5, but there is no reaction. A camera does reaction. This is good that does not coordinate uh, the, the different pictures or the different knowledge in, um, in categories. Just put them all together. And that's why Margaret says that something must give a meaning, a personal meaning. 
the subjective experience of what's happening, and that's why we are not on uh, camera. So, Asher tries here to say, we are facing really the hard problem. We are talking about something we know, but it seems impossible, like here in this object, the pen is facing the same problem. So, that's why we intended that to study it after having this knowledge. And the Masio is a Portuguese scientist, a neurologist, he is quite concerned with the problems of caution. And this is the last book that came last two years. And it is an amount of information on conscious from the biological point of view. So, he proposed that uh, our consciousness and the totality of our uh, inner life is some kind of produce of brain. But some other scientists do not agree. But he is a, a representative of this issue. And of course, he gives some importance to the, um, to the subjective experience. The self, I'm here, I exist, I have a life. And there are things around me that refer to me. So, even if we have the same issue concerning the self construction and the problem of conscious linked to the self, uh, some people have different uh, considerations. And if we look further to uh, all the states of consciousness that brings as well some knowledge, uh, we go from modified states of consciousness to clinical hypnosis, what do we see? That we can change even the perspective of ourselves using drugs, and uh, drugs coming from the nature, Hadiceps purpurea, uh, from LSD, that gives us LSD, cannabis, tetraidocannabinol, as well, changes our perception of self and the surroundings. Taturus tramonium, or this from mescaline, locophora williams, the cactus. Those that read Carlos Castaneda know about it. And then we got some other knowledge from um, people looking for what was said by this gracious. Um, saying that they travel on Saturday to meet in Belsabu for a, a kind of, uh, some kind of orgies. And what did they found in their scripts? That they used some other alkaloids, not only this one, so potent alcinogens, but as well aquanitum and belladonna. And they put all together with fat, big fat, uh, let us say, and they <coughs> They put it in their uh, stick of, uh, uh, and then they, they just ran on it. What they did, actually, they were absorbing a lot of alkaloids through their sex, uh, and then they traveled around where they were. So we are getting insights not only from biology, but from history, society, uh, so, 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 sociology, and so. And then we try to figure out, so what happened when we are in an outer state of consciousness, or we are not at, at the moment, at least we are not so in an outer state of, let us say, in a modified state of consciousness because we are attentive. So the building of uh, um, pictures or imagination we have, it's just something built from our imagination, but it doesn't exist like this white triangle. Freud tried to bring in the contemporary type a kind of cartography. So where are we? What kind of maps do we have for consciousness? And of course, it's well known from these this three dimensions, unconscious, subconscious, and conscious. But there are some limitations. And uh, here, there is this symbol that I find it quite interesting, that comes from the civilization of the Indo Valley, um, very ancient culture that even with this symbol we know from Aum and those that practice actually yoga and some other kind of meditation they know what is the sound uh, uh, here expressed by Aum but Aum, three letters from the Sanskrit uh, alphabet it's not an alphabet actually it's a syllabary or syllab that brings us the idea that of different worlds like the most ancient cartography of consciousness. This is the world outside me, the world one. This is the world in my thoughts, the contents of my culture, but you can have access to them if I express them. 
and this very narrow way of my dreams and we know even ourselves that sometimes we do not have access completely to the what we have been dreaming in the last night so very narrow very narrow and they talk about another world that still have some meaning that in these cultures asiatic cultures oriented cultures but we can only have access to uh, this world the fourth world if we change our uh, situation as we are now quite conscious in, in the kind of futility um, so we should change it in a kind of relaxation using drugs meditation to have access to a spiritual world as a thing. Very interesting if we look for it. If we come closer to the other times, hypnosis, the boss can simulate all these things without using drugs. Mesmer was when a few fathers he fall in disgrace because someone found that there was not any magnetism and the commission that found it was a commission where there was guillotine, the inventor of the guillotine, and this one, and they said, okay, there is no scissors produced by magnetism, but imagination. So imagination has a strong power to bring us to the different concepts we want, and then we thought, hey, why don't we use it to treat people, to bring some other uh, well-being, enhancing, enhancing as we have been hearing, enhancing the qualities, something that people want to have better and better. Mm. Milton Erickson was one of this, and he has just used words. So the words can make a moderation, a cognitive neural moderation. That is now something that is uh, quite establishing. Uh, that words, concepts, sounds can really change our uh, neural modulation. We use only words to do it. Anyway, some people ask, is this a placebo? Well, probably it is, but not only. And uh, if we see some kind of the last research, that we have been collecting, we see that administration of is also an active treatment. So if we give something like, and I know the effects before that I experienced, if I did give a placebo, I have nearly the same areas activated in our brain, up to 60% of the same areas. That, that is why some scientists say that imagine, imagine is nearly the same as doing. Same areas activate motor areas or other are nearly the same. Or we can understand it in a kind of a, a, a conditional reflex as we see here. Okay, are we dealing with it? It can be. Anyway, it's something that works. Or the recent studies of fluoxetine, an antidepressant um, and placebo. If we use it, uh, even giving it to patients having a heavy depression, uh, giving fluoxetine, and after some years, one year, two years, if uh, they fall again in a state of disease, this time we give uh, placebo, and a mark placebo, right now to placebo, and what do we see if we compare um, the different types of uh, where they are placed, where they are kept by the brain? If we have seen red fluoxetine responders, placebo responders, and both, and you see that some areas are just the same, some not completely. And uh, there is for placebo and placebo work, because there are placebo responders, and placebo responders in depressive states, very heavy depressive states, are up to 40%. So it seems that placebo works. At least there is a representation in the brain. And where goes we see in the sub lot of Irish as well. So let us face that our consciousness, what it be or not, uh, all imagination reflex, pollution reflex, it seems that it is possible that we change, we rewire even our brain. 
there are some similarities. I talked about the sleep temples, there are some similarities and as well some differences. Of course, they are faced here. Where are we? When we use imagination in a relaxed state, we have yet a different uh, states of uh, dream and uh, sleep, rest sleep, that is uh, dream. We that we are nearly here, we are awake, and then we are we do not enter in sleep. It's something different. It's a kind of sonorous, violent state in the project imagery. So that's where we can act and change, neuromodulate the, our brain. So we see the difference. And some say that what happened then when we just use this kind of somnolence to to change, to neuromodulate in a cognitive way our brain, that we are just putting away this anterior mode network. It is as this kind of uh, the folk mode network are always working, even we are sleeping or dreaming or just paying attention. And when we enter in that kind of silence, this kind of the folk mode network is put away, and then we enter with imagination, with the words we hear from outside, or we create for ourselves in the kind in an outer influence state. That's only theory. What we did is that we collected blood, blood samples from people every mm, 15 minutes using hormones connected to, to stress and putting people in a uh, way of recalling traumatic events um, of their life, of their youth, adolescence, and what did we see? When we began, this was relaxation, and then we began into a, a kind of action, it was actually a trauma friend of uh, this woman um, killed because he jumped from a high um, level building and we thought she's dreaming, she's telling us a story, but then actually it was true. And what we see, we see the heart rate at that moment just jumps, we see the skin computation, the death was coming down naturally. When we dry the skin, we feel relaxed, but cortisol when, uh, and when we say now it's over, it's over, return, return, then it's here. Here the hormones will change picture. So when we go back, we are not only using only imagination, we are changing as well the behavior we have. And then we thought, is it possible to recall memories even from people that are like this? Yes, it was possible. And when we made some confirmation and even people telling us near that experiences and we read about it there are other other books now two books came in the last two months um some partner just wrote a very good book um really that mm, erasing that that's the name very good where it talks about this kind of experience, and this is a painting by Hieronymus Bosch 500 years ago, or he himself had this kind of experience, or someone told him. So, it seems that something is um, there, and it's not only some kind of only one subjective. There is an intense subjectivity of experience concerning near death experience. And even a colleague, psychiatrist, wanted to study um, birthmarks. Is there any kind of story behind birthmarks? And some studied a lot of that and they published the book, as you saw before, on children that had some strange birthmarks that were never in their biographic story. And they collected stories of them and researched what was behind. These children talked not only in India but in Europe talked about a certain death they had in a supposed previous life, but he investigated it and he found that even the family that they were referring to and the cause of death, he investigated it in the papers, in the newspapers or in the laboratories of uh, forensic medicine and they could see it. It says, this is not the proof. But when we take it in account, because if we want to study consciousness, we must have this income. Of course, then let us go behind the brain. 
And again, we are talking about uh, cartography of consciousness that go behind the brain. So, if we induce the uh, state of consciousness, so we have access to an expanded consciousness. Is there a knowledge? A knowledge that we could gather here or there here, but now, but through, through an altered state or modified state of consciousness, we want access to this kind of um, cloud, very fine, very subtle, but we could go even, let us say that this cloud only goes through this altered state of consciousness. And then we have access to a lot of information <coughs> concerning this. And I'm a member of the Bjorn Foundation that supports this, this research on dreams, let us say dreams and sleep. But in our edition from this year, actually in March, we are dealing with mind matter interaction from the point of view of psychophysiology, but as well from uh, scientific um, parapsychology. Scientific parapsychology is some and the same methodology, it is a uh, scientific discipline that conceals, uses the same rules as the normal, normal, let us say, uh, science. So the phenomena are there, we cannot dismiss them, so let's accept and use them for uh, studying. We have a lot to decide at the committee that organizes it in Porto next March, but if you are interested, I have the programs here, or you have, have access through um, internet, writing the our foundation behind and beyond the brain, and you see all kinds of people. And then we go further and say, is it possible to change through a will, a will uh, of imagining, imagining uh, states of consciousness to modify structures and compare them? Let us study. So, matter now love and uh, romantic love. Some areas, let's say, are coincident, but they are different. So, it seems that through our will, through our imagination, we can even rewire the brain, neuromodulate, and, and this is as well not only cognitive, but there is something that we can um, have as an objective type. Or, some studied, a neurosurgeon studied nuns, comrades, nuns, and asked them to imagine what is their maternal love with their parents, and then compare with the mystical uh, state, feeling of sacred, feeling presence of God, and they are as well different. So, are, is the brain producing this state, or is me the subject through will, through imagination that alters the brain. So things are changing. And if we study even meditators, we got to the same results that we are changing and activating uh, areas concerned with emotion, talents, influence, cortex, cortex, um, differently from non-meditators against meditators or all others that said they gave a single high level of waves, 50 hertz a second, um, they are more um, synchronic with the every kind of mental practice like the um, meditation. And so our results brought us, but this is always like that. Then we try to simulate a pseudosiasis um, kind of um, pregnancy. The kind of pregnancy, let us simulate the pregnancy. Okay, we got some students, mm, and then we put it to the blame, just hearing music, nothing more, and studying the three hormones concerned to uh, stress. And um, then we put them under hypnosis and let's simulate the pregnancy. And they really were behaving like they had babies and feeding their babies. Some said, well, I hope that my body still remains the same after this, this experiment. But nothing changed. But when we brought them back to some trauma and some event that were very connected to emotions, so again, this free association, we got a lot of differences um, in these cortisol hormones. 
Then we came to some issues that uh, what if uh, there is only one body and two brains? What if? Five minutes. Yeah. Five minutes. Yeah. Five minutes. Yeah. Five minutes. <laughs> okay. So what what if? So how would these people behave or and and they behave, they will not discuss, they are not telling to put your foot away or your foot behind. So they even have different ideas discussed between them and it is a kind of communication. It seems there are information that passes very fast because they must act uh, with synchronicity. This is the same as well if we go further and even use robots, robots near a sleeper. Is someone sleeping susceptible of influencing a robot, a random number generator that expresses itself in different ways? It seems a lot of experience um, fail. And some others are studying the influence in random number generators where it has something with impact, football games, the death of, pol of a, a politician, and they think that they are different. The question is still there. Now we are coming to, after all this journey, then we are interested to study it. This, uh, she is a Pamela, she is a doctor, just interested in this phenomenon. What can we do with our all knowledge? Some are just talking about an energy medicine, what it can be. We are talking about this phenomenon. Some talk about faith. The results are controversial still because of methodology. It seems that we are we are in, with a patient in a kind of therapeutic field where information circulates and can be handled, can be changed. A lot of people are just concerning the different parts of the world. Can we use it for healing? Transpersonal, hypnotherapy, body, mind and spirit. French as well, using an hypnosis humanist. So it seems that we are coming to a point where we try, that's why we built this laboratory and leave it, try to integrate consciousness, mind, body, equilibrium, in a way where we try to gather different knowledge, different uh, scientific methods, integrating it and not putting away, and trying to study. Thank you.